Well, congratulations, church. You've coped with changing of the hours. Well done. That's very good. You won't find it so easy to change the time on your cooker. <laughs> You're going to struggle with that for the rest of the day. I always struggle with that one. But come, all of you, young or old, online or on site, you're welcome as we join our Easter celebration with billions of uh, Christians around the world and down through the ages, a celebration of life and death. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever would believe in him shall not perish, but shall have eternal life. And Jesus says, I am the living one. I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore. I have the keys of life and death. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, says Paul, then they are a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We can have a fresh start with Jesus and in our life because of Jesus. So we're going to share a Christmas greeting. Let's read it together. A celib- uh, Christmas. <laughs> Easter. Easter greeting. We can use it at Christmas too. Good, let's say together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Our God and Father, as this morning breaks, there dawns the light of a new resurrection day. We've come to worship and adore you. As those who are your children, for that is what we are, warm our hearts and lift our praise to you and renew our confidence in you. Lord Jesus, Easter morning tells us you are alive. You walk free from the darkness of the tomb to bring your light and life to all who believe. We come to call you Lord and Saviour, who's removed our sin from us as far as the east is from the west. May we shine for you. Holy Spirit, move among us in power as you continue to bring good news, gospel greatness, and freedom for those bound by chains of sin, sight for the spiritually blind, releasing those bound by the enemy, and announcing this is the day, this is the year of freedom in Christ, and we share Jesus with the world in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's hear the Easter reading as Julia comes to bring that to us. Our Bible reading from Luke 24, verses 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, Suddenly, two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. (coughs) But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Yes, yes, yes. 
can't remember the words, neither can I, don't worry. <laughs> hey, there we go. Let's start again. Christ is risen, hallelujah, risen, our victorious head, sing his praises, hallelujah, Christ is risen, hallelujah, we need to free our hearts adore him, as his light once more appears, and we will enjoy before him. Rising up from grief and tears, Christ is risen, hallelujah, risen, our victorious head, sing his praises, hallelujah, Christ is risen from the dead. Christ is risen, all the sad. He looks at the wild to the living amongst the dead. The angels emphasized the fact that Jesus had risen. And Peter, even Peter, ran to the tomb, who not long beforehand ran from his master, denying he ever knew him. But even he was amazed. So there are many things puzzling and perplexing to us which would be plain and profitable if we rightly understood the words of Jesus. We may be lost in wonder, like these disciples who believed Jesus to be the Son of God and the true Messiah. 
Yet should be so lacking in faith to believe that he would fulfill this miracle of his resurrection promise. Let's pray. Lord, help us to live in the gladness, the joy, the hope and grace of Easter Sunday every day. Let us have hearts of thankfulness for your sacrifice and resurrection. Let us have eyes that look upon your grace and rejoice in our salvation. Help us to walk in that mighty grace and tell your good news to the world. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Now, uh, I've got to bring you a little bit of uh, notice about uh, nominations for charity trustees. I don't want to lose the Easter spirit here. It's just something that we have to do. Okay? But this is part of our worship here. And I want us to treat it as part of our worship over Easter that I do this and that we look for leadership in this church. So let me read this out uh, to you. We have an annual general meeting uh, here at the church to be held on 23rd of April, 2024. And the election will take, chase, uh, take place for charity trustees. Charity trustees have the duty of managing the affairs of the church. Now, Barry Chivers and Jim Collins have completed their terms of service as trustees. Barry does not wish to stand again, but Jim will. Any church member who is not employed by the church or who has been baptised by immersion as a believer is eligible to stand as a leader as in the election for charity trustee. So nominations are invited, please, from these people. Um, nominations must be submitted in writing with a supporting signature of two other church members and the consent of the candidate. Is that clear? Two signatures and the consent of the candidate. They must be received by myself as acting church sec secretary at the moment by next Sunday. That is the close of day next Sunday, Sunday the 7th. I've got forms today, um, and I'll be here during the week as well. So if you need forms, come and see me, please. And uh, I will give those uh, to you to fill out. Members are asked when nominating a candidate to indicate the gifts and skills that they feel that those persons might bring to the trustee role. Um, so members considering standing for election as a charity trustee are invited to discuss the duties and the time commitment involved in that. Can we just spend a moment praying about that as part of our worship as we lead into this? Thank you. Father God, we thank you for leaders. We thank you that you appoint between us, amongst us, people gifted to serve you. So Father, here as a church, which is also a charity, in need of trustees, we commit this into your hands as part of our worship, that you will grant to us and lead us to those people that you have brought to us to help build your church as you build your church here in this place, in this community. And we ask of this in the name of the living Lord Jesus, who rose this day. Mm. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Colin. You know, mobile phones have changed our culture forever. You can make and receive calls. No need to track down a phone box anymore. You can do emails and get messages. No need to go into the office anymore. You can buy and sell things from all around the world. You know, going to the shops. It's so last century. You can do all manner of things. You can play games with people right around the world uh, on your phone. We could do so much more if only we knew how to use all the apps on our phone. But one of the huge changes came with this little section at the front, this screen, the ability to take photos. And now we can take photos on our phones, we can take videos, we can take selfies, and we can record all these things and share them with others. 
So this morning, I want to imagine we put a mobile phone in the hands of those witnessing the Easter story. And what would we see? We see a number of images. These are not something I've created. I'm grateful to the person who put this together, uh, which I downloaded, you guessed it, on my phone. So often we skip through Easter week. We pick up Palm Sunday and then Easter morning, here we are, and we look at those two things, and we miss out so much, and that's a shame. And so we uh, look at the, the gospel accounts, and John spends half of his gospel just on this last week. As Baptists, we might spend two 30-minute sermons. So we're going to try and redress the balance a little and walk through this Christian uh, walk through this Holy Week from last Sunday through to Easter morning. And we began last week as we looked at uh, Palm Sunday, the day when Jesus came to Jerusalem, having ridden into the temple. He, uh, having ridden into the city, he went to the temple. And we read in Scripture, Jesus entered the temple courts. He began to drive out those who were selling it is written, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. I wonder, when we fail to pray, we rob God of what he longs for, don't we? When did we last to rob God of what was rightfully his? Then after that, he taught daily in the temple. But the leading priests and the teachers of the religious law and the other leaders of the people began planning how to kill him. But they couldn't think of nothing because all the people hung on every word that he said. So I wonder, do we hang on every word of Jesus or do we get distracted? Later, Jesus was in the home of Simon the leper. A woman came to him with a very expensive jar of perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. When the disciples saw this, they were indignant. Why this waste? This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, why are you bothering this woman? She's done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare my body for burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will be remembered and discussed. I wonder... Are we willing to do a beautiful thing, something costly for Jesus in our day? Then Judas Iscariot, one of the 12 disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, how much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. And from that time on, Jesus began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. I wonder, how many times have I, how many times have we failed Jesus this week? It was just before the Passover festival, Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. And having loved his own who were in the world, he showed them the full extent of his love. The evening meal was in progress. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. And he had come from God and now was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin 
and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realise now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who've had a bath need only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean and you are clean, all of you. Yet not every one of you is clean. For he knew who he was going to betray him. When he finished washing their feet, he put his clothes on and returned to his place. Do you understand what I've done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash one another's feet. I've set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. I wonder, are we willing to wash one another's feet? That is, serve others in humility. So then in the Last Supper, Jesus was resting at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples. And he said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink from it, all of you, for this is the blood of my covenant. It is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. So I wonder, do we believe or think that we actually need forgiveness of sins? Jesus was troubled in spirit. And said, very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another. At a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I've dipped it in the dish. And in dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you were about to do, do quickly. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out and it was night. I wonder, do we spend our time looking around to see who else has sinned? Or do we realise we too are often guilty? So after this, Jesus went with his disciples to Gethsemane. And he said, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took Peter, James and John along with him. And he became anguished and distressed in heart. And then he said to them, my soul is crushed. 
It is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may the cup be taken from me, but yet not as I will, but as you will. And then he returned to his disciples, but found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me just for one hour? He asked this of Peter. And he said, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is so weak. And he went away a second time and prayed, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, then may your will be done. And when he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. And so he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same things. And then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. The Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of sinners. My betrayer has come. So I wonder, are we spiritually asleep? We are committed to watch and pray to avoid temptation. While he was still speaking, Jesus, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs. The traitor Judas had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you have come for. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus and arrested him. But one of the men with Jesus pulled a sword and struck the high priest's slave, slashing off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Don't you realise I could ask my father for thousands of angels to protect us? And he would send them instantly. But how then would scripture be fulfilled that this must happen? Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. I wonder, does fear sometimes make us lash out and attack others verbally instead of accepting God's will and going his way? So those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had assembled. And the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for false evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. But they did not find any, though many false witnesses came forward. So finally, two came forward and declared, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God, tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so. Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and returning and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Look, now you have him, the guilty. And they all shouted, Guilty. He deserves to die. So I wonder, when people misunderstand or misrepresent 
Jesus, do we speak out? Now Peter was sitting in a courtyard and a servant girl came to him saying, you also were with Jesus of Galilee. But he denied it before them all. I don't know what you're talking about. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, this fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. Oh, I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you your way. Then he began to call down curses. And he swore to him, I don't know the man. Immediately a cock crowed. And Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. I wonder when people are discussing faith, your friends, your colleagues, to you, do I admit to knowing Jesus? Or do we deny him or stay silent? So meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor who asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. And when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him again, Don't you hear the testimony that they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge. This to the great amazement of the governor. But now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. And at that time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? For he knew it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with this Jesus who is called the Messiah? And they all answered, crucify him. But why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder. Crucify him! Crucify him! And when Pilate saw that he was getting absolutely nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and he washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. And the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Well, then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. So I wonder. Pilate washed his hands to claim his innocence. So do we do similar things? Some of the governor's soldiers took them, Jesus, to into their headquarters and called out the entire regiment. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, then twisted together a t crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spat on him and took a staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they'd mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. I wonder, do we do violence to Jesus for whatever we did to the least of the brothers of his? 
we did to him. So carrying the cross by himself, Jesus went out to the place of the skull. And there they crucified him with two others, one on each side, Jesus in the middle. So I wonder, Jesus placed himself in the middle of the guilty. Why do you think that might be? We're going to uh, sing a song, You Chose the Cross. If you feel able, let's stand to sing and reflect on that very question. I'm lost in wonder. I'm lost in wonder. I'm I'm lost lost in love. I'm I'm lost lost in praise.
seated. We continue on near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. And when Jesus saw them there, and saw his mother there, and a disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. I wonder, when you look at others in church, others who are followers of Jesus, do you see them as people? Or strangers? Or do you see them as family? So it was now about noon, midday. And darkness came over the whole land until about three o'clock. For the sun had stopped shining. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two. And Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. So I wonder, the temple curtain kept people out of God's presence. What things still do that? How can we make Jesus more accessible to us? centurion seeing what had happened praised God and said surely he was the son of God I wonder in the midst of that suffering and humbling that man saw Jesus not just as another man nailed to a cross of which he'd seen many but he saw him as the son of God to we. Who is that man who was nailed to a cross? There's a song, I'm sure we all know it, that sums it up very well. We'll just sing the, the first verse. It's when I survey. When I survey the wondrous cross on which So as evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had become a follower of Jesus, and he went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. And Pilate ordered that it be given to him. So Joseph took the body, he wrapped it in clean cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had had cut out of a rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and then went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb and watched all of this. So I wonder, do we demonstrate the same boldness, the same generosity of heart as Joseph? The next day, the day after preparation day, the chief priests and Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was alive, the deceiver said, after three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse 
than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they sealed the tomb and posted guards to protect it. I wonder. Here were people desperate not to believe in Jesus. Who do we know who is resistant to believing? Who is resistant to faith? So on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took spices they had prepared, that they had prepared, and they went to the tomb. But they found the stone rolled away. And they entered, but they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. And while they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes and gleamed like lightning stood beside them. And in their fright, the women bowed down their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here. He has risen. <coughs> Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, but on the third day be raised again. And then they remembered the words. So I wonder, do you really believe Jesus did rise from the dead? For you, for me. When the others came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. I wonder. Peter was witnessing the greatest miracle of Jesus. He was wondering not only about that moment, I'm sure, but the events of the last week, which is why we are called to wonder about them too. And I wonder, do we still believe that Jesus works miracles even today? So Mary stood outside the tomb crying. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels, two angels in white. And they were seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the feet. She saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. And he asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it that you're looking for? And thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have taken him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And he will say to us, Colin, Jen, Pam, whatever your name is, Jesus will say that name. Jesus turned towards him and cried, Teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father, to your Father, to my God, and to your God. And Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I've seen the Lord. And she told them, all the things that he had said to her. So I wonder, have we seen the Lord? Not necessarily with our eyes physically, but here in our hearts.
So we've heard from the gospel accounts of the life and death of Jesus. This last week, all the events in detail, we have them, them told by eyewitnesses. Not just one, not just two, a whole host of them who all saw the same things. There's so much detail. It is like a, a series of selfies, but these haven't been photoshopped and changed. They are there in all their rawness, all the failings as well as the greatness, all the hardship as well as the, the joys. We see the beauty, we see the betrayal, we see the meals, the trials, the injustice, the suffering, the death, and finally, the resurrection. And they tell this story. They describe the events that we can read them even today and make our decision. And at any point, Jesus could have stepped back and said, no, I'm not going through with this. But he continued on. Why did he continue on? Look around. Look around at our world today. Look on the news. Look in the newspapers. You see the messes everywhere. That is why Jesus came. The wars, the injustice, the hatred, the greed. That is why he came. He came because those things not only are in our newspapers. They also lurk inside each and every one of us. And it's all very well reading these accounts or hearing them and saying, well, that's good, or even saying, well, they're true. But if we won't go that next step and say, it was for me, that Jesus went through this because I have sinned, because I have failed, then there is no gain. If we refuse to acknowledge that all the things we have done that we regret and we think back on and come to us in those dark moments when we least expect them, when we are haunted by those failings and selfishness, if we pretend that we haven't done them, if we deny that we've caused pain to others and pain to God in heaven, if we say, well, there's not a problem for me, then there is a problem. Only people who know they have sinned, who know they have failed, know they need a saviour. If you've never failed, you don't need a saviour. God bless you. But you don't believe in him anyway. We all need a saviour because we have all sinned. And when we realise that, we know we can't provide our own solution. We can't undo those things that we have done. But Jesus went to the cross so that they could be dealt with. That he could bear the punishment, the pain, the blame for our sin. That verse we sang earlier, uh, when I survey, the last two lines could be a bit oblique, could be a bit hard to understand. My richest gain, I count but loss and poor contempt on all my pride. The writer is saying, when I look at the cross of Christ, the, the greatest thing that I can give my whole life means that I end up richer. But in order to do that, I need to crush my pride. I need to pour contempt on all my pride. And that is often, almost always, the thing that stands between people and faith. Pride. The inability to say, yes, I've failed. The inability to admit you have done wrong and you can't undo it. So that is why the, this story, this last week in particular, is so compelling. Let Jesus be that saviour for you. He went through all of that for you and for me. He was the one who took the punishment and the blame, despite being innocent. He was the one who died so you might have life. 
That's grace. That's the love of God. Not because you deserve it, but because he wants to give you fullness of life and bring you back to himself. And that's what these witnesses celebrated and went on to spread the good news far and wide. Sometimes at the cost of their suffering, sometimes at the cost of their life. Because they were so convinced this was the Son of God, Jesus in the flesh. And that's what we're here to celebrate today. That's the only reason we come on Easter Sunday. Not to fill out an hour of our time on a Sunday morning, but to celebrate that Jesus is the Son of God who died and rose again to bear our sin and give us life. I wonder if we can therefore resonate more fully with this story. Have you messed up? Have you regrets? Have you failed? Do you realise there's nothing you can do to resolve that? Do you seek a saviour who could relieve that heavy burden from your shoulders? Then ask Jesus to be your Lord and saviour now. I wonder, would you bow your heads? Would we, as we speak to God, who is alive forevermore? We say, Lord Jesus, I know I have sinned. And I... Trust in you, trusting that you are the only one who can forgive because you went to the cross. I'm truly sorry for all my failings and I trust you and ask you to be my saviour. Transform me, give me a new start in yourself, in your grace. Where there was darkness, Lord, would you bring light that would shine brighter and brighter and transform my life until that day when we will see you face to face. In Jesus' name, amen. If, if you have felt something different today, if, if that maybe has been a prayer that has really challenged you, then do come and speak to myself or Colin after the service. We'd love to speak with you further. It may just be the first step of, of coming to understand this wonderful story from history. We're going to sing a, a song together. It's called This Is Amazing Grace. And if you feel able, let's stand to sing as uh, Shine come back in amongst us.
Have a seat, it's great to see crowded uh, seats here at the front as Shine has come in, our children and families working with. So grateful to our team who week by week just, um, just work with our young people. Perhaps we give them a, a, a clap of thank you. Thank you very much. We're all the team. That's really good. Right, has anyone got a birthday? We like to celebrate birthdays. Has anyone got a birthday in the past week? Coming week? Bob's got one. Right. Have a toffee. Pull your teeth out. There we go. There we go. When, when's your birthday, Bob? Third of April. Good stuff. Claire's got a, a birthday. Claire, when's your birthday? Second. Okay, that's Tuesday. Tuesday. Any, any other? Oh, Barry's got a birthday. When's that? 5th of April. 5th of April. That's great. Happy birthday. 85. Wow. Where am I? Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, it's not the birthday. Wedding anniversary. 1st of April. April Fool's Day. Tell us you and your husband's name. Terry. Terry and Trisha. Terry and Trisha celebrating. Oh, right, Barry. You've even got mail. There we go. Happy birthday. Barry's a wonderful guy and one of our leaders stepping down. And while we're on, while we're on birthday, uh, wedding anniversaries, I've got one too with Lucy, my wonderful wife. Thank you, Lucy. There we go. This is perfect. Any other birthdays? Any other celebrations? Let's give thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to celebrate together. We are grateful and we're blessed by each of these people. And Lord, would you just continue to work in their lives and show them your love that they may show your love to the world in marriages and in birthdays and the, the life that we have. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and share with us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Very happy Easter to you all. We have had a wonderful time in Shine this morning, thinking about the Easter story. So we heard the Easter story, and it was wonderful to hear that some of the children already knew so much about the Easter story because they've been learning about it at school, and they've remembered how we've also learned about it in church. 
And so they answered some questions about that. And we had a time of worship together. We sang our praises to the Lord. And then they've made some brilliant Easter crafts that they're going to come and show you now. So can some of our children come up the front with your crafts and show the church what you've made? That would be brilliant. So make sure you spread out so they can see. And this is really clever. Because as you can see... Claire, would you just demonstrate Amelie's there? So we've got the two, and then you can see Jesus is alive, and then there's Jesus as well, rising again. <laughs> so, wonderful. So we celebrated that Jesus died for us and he rose again, and that is what we celebrate today. And we thank you that these children are able to hear that and then we talked about how they can go out of here and shine for Jesus and share that with their friends, family and those close to them. So it's brilliant that we are able to just raise them up at this age into adulthood that they will share the love of Jesus with all that they know. And that is our prayer for them and it's our prayer for you too. Mm. So thank you, everybody. Well Excellent, thank you. And I think... For every young person that's come today, there will be something special. If you go through to uh, our hall through there, coffee and tea afterwards, there's something egg-shaped and chocolate-flavoured. So that would be good. And where's Jane? Jane, give us a wave. Jane there, wearing a yellow jumper, she would like to give you something she's crocheted and made it. So that's very good. See Jane again through in the hall. She'd love to give you a Christmas gift. Right, who likes me? Christmas. Christmas. I'm always ahead of myself, aren't I? Yeah. Who likes speaking out in, a, in front of a crowd? Can you put your hands up? Oh, not many hands. Who likes praying in front of a crowd? Even fewer hands. Who doesn't like putting their hands up in public? <laughs> okay. Right. We're going to do some praying together, and it's something we can all join in. So would you like to go like that, every, every person, adults and young people, and then go like that. Put your hand over your mouth, because we're going to do whispering prayers. It's really easy. Everyone can do this and not get worried about it. So as you hold your hands over your mouth, could you whisper someone who's very special to you, who you're grateful for? Just say their name. And now name something that you're really thankful for today or this week. And now whisper something that you're sorry for or that you want to say sorry for. And now name someone who's ill or you'd like to see get better or uh, have a better situation. Now maybe you've seen something on the news, a situation or a country that you'd like to, to bring before God. Just whisper the name of that situation before God. And we can let Jesus have these things and he will deal with them. So just one more thing to whisper into your hands. It's amen. We're going to sing about the greatest day in history. If you feel able, let's stand up and sing the greatest day in history. It's a happy day as we go out to celebration. <laughs>
pray a blessing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus, who died on that cross but rose again to life. And that is the happiest day that gives us hope in our situation. Send us out with that joy and hope in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do go through and join our celebrations and uh, refreshments in the fall.